Warm well, welcome everyone to this live studio talk show during World Water Week. Welcome to you here joining us on site and a heartfelt welcome for everyone joining online. Today and right now we are launching a global report uh, called Wastewater Turning Problems into Solutions. And it's been developed by UNEP and Grid Arendal. And it's, I'm delighted to have you here that have been working so intensely with this report. And you're going to share with us the results of the report and also how can we turn wastewater into more solutions uh, that benefit all of us. I think I would I actually ask you to introduce yourself very shortly and also to share how have you been working with the report. You can start with you. Thank you. I'm Heidi Sorelli. I'm uh, acting chief of the source to see unit that's focusing on developing the report very much in collaboration with Grid Arendal. So our team has been working on this very hard over the last year almost. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Daniel Diva. I work with the Stockholm Environment Institute and I was one of the uh, contributors to this report amongst many other colleagues from around the world. Yes, my name is Christina Tugeson. I work with Grid Arndell as a waste and marine data expert, we can call it that. And I've been the project manager of this report, trying to pull together a lot of experts' opinions, like Daniel's here contributing to the report, and now we have a final report. Good, Happy and congratulations now that the report is it's, <coughs> it's here, and it's, uh, yeah, you can breathe out a little bit more and celebrate it, it's here, but... And we're going to talk about the solutions the report highlights, but let's start also, and also to get everybody watching on board, can you, Heidi, if you can start with what are the, what was the context that led to this report and what are the challenges that we have when it comes to, globally, when it comes to wastewater? Well, we launched a report more than 10 years ago called uh, Sick Water, which also a collaboration with many experts and Good Arndal and others. Mm -hmm. And we were hoping that the report at the time would be highlighting the issue of wastewater, not only as a problem, but really as a resource. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're seeing that when we are taking stock now, there is still quite a long way to go to, to kind of move this paradigm shift, looking at it from a resource perspective rather than a problem. Yeah, and what it also, but, but what it happened, it's like 10 years uh, since the last report, have, has there been, have things changed or I think got better, have things got worse when it comes to wastewater? Wastewater is still one of the most pressing challenges that exist, um, especially in many regions around the world. You have large amounts flowing into the environment untreated. And that's a lost opportunity because if we don't look at it as a resource, we're really kind of not meeting or trying to address the crisis related to climate to water, to biodiversity, and to pollution. Good. And that links me to your question, a question to you, Christina. Like, like you're highlighting the challenges, and also that it seems that it's going very slowly, this shift that you all are eager to mm -hmm. see. But what are the, the, the possibilities also seeing waste management, wastewater as a resource? Well, there's a huge... What would you call that? It's huge benefit or resource, as you say, it's a resource. I mean, we can do a lot of things with it if we actually do start to clean it. So can you speak a little bit louder? I can. Yes. Better? So, yes, the, so the, the first thing is energy. I mean, it creates five times, if we clean wastewater, it often creates five times more energy than we actually need to clean it. So there we have a benefit. I mean, energy. So by cleaning wastewater, that we get more, we get energy. more energy yes. than what we use Cleaning, cleaning it, it of yes. course. So it's yeah. a plus side. Then we can use what we clean it for as nutrients. So that would be fertilizer for farming. We can use the water for watering with. But we can also clean it as much as we can use it for drinking. And can we drink wastewater? Yes. Wow. Uh, and we have to clean it. Yeah. Very. We have very, to know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Actually, please. one of one of our case studies come from <laughs> Namibia, and they have been drinking wastewater. For 50 years. Um, have, I, have I been drinking wastewater without knowing it, maybe? Probably. Yeah, I hope so. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the good thing for is the environment. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm good that I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, water is, is... We have the water we have on, on the planet. It's not going to come more. Yeah. And if we define wastewater, it's not something that we take and exactly. throw it out to space. Yeah. We still have it here. And one place you might be leading out some, some treated wastewater into a water body. Further down the line, you might be taking it into drinking water. Yeah. 
So yes. So of course I have. It's so just that maybe it's like since uh, we have this water cycle, so we but many think of like wastewater, it's like, no, that it's, but it's, it's, it's never been, but we have many possibilities in reusing even yes. more. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll link it to that, Daniel. I would love to hear, you've been also working with the report, but you also have been adding uh, a dimension of mm -hmm. like youth and future and also innovations mm -hmm. linked to wastewater management. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share with us like what are the, the innovations and the solutions that are highlighted in the report? Okay, um, yeah, there's many innovations that are highlighted in the report. And, and a key issue that we discuss in the report is that uh, we need to have not just existing knowledge and approaches for both managing and reusing wastewater, but there's a need for new innovative approaches. Now, of course, when you talk about innovation, people quickly think about technologies or, you know, wastewater treatment technologies or wastewater treatment products. But innovation is not just about the technical approaches for how to both collect, treat, and reuse or turn wastewater into useful products. It's also about social innovation. For example, how can we build trust uh, amongst people? Uh, how can we build social acceptance uh, amongst people? How can we build awareness amongst people about the use uh, of the resources that are available in wastewater and about the importance of conserving uh, those very um, important um, resources that are available in wastewater? And another important thing is that innovation is also something that should be context-specific. And this is something also that is discussed uh, to great length in the report in terms of uh, being environmentally, socially, culturally, economically viable and acceptable in the different contexts where different types of innovations, regardless of whether it's technical or social or mm -hmm. financial innovations as well, uh, as well to, to sort of foster these different approaches for managing wastewater and turning it um, into resources. So these are things that we discussed at great length um, in the report. Beautiful, thank you. And linked to that, Heidi, and what you were highlighting also about how things are, have not been moving forward, and you're also talking about the need of social innovations, and uh, the way I hear as well, maybe I interpreted you wrongly, but the need also like the change of perspective and behavioral mm. changes, it's like how we see uh, things. What would you say are the biggest opportunities when it comes to like removing the obstacles mm. that are slowing down the, the process right now, since there, the upsides are so many. Is to continue highlighting the benefits of looking at this type of uh, reuse of wastewater. It's to elevate the issue at the international policy arena and make um, all actors <laughs> come together to better communicate the benefits, the opportunities and the approaches. So how do you increase applicability of the innovation of mm -hmm. the different solutions that are forthcoming, both existing, but also future-wise. How do we engage the stakeholders in this group? So I think the message is really, we can't waste water, and wastewater is there to be used. We shouldn't uh, lose that opportunity. Second thing is, it's not a visible issue as much as plastics, for example, but it, just because it's out of sight, it can't be out of our minds. Mm. So it's up to kind of the broader community, and these type of platforms are extremely important. But also we talk to other entities, other uh, groups of stakeholders, other opportunities to really highlight this, the key messages and the opportunities. Yeah. And also just ask like, a, like also for me preparing for all the sessions during World Water Week, there's so many reports and there's so much policy, but the challenge is just like bringing all the contents and the facts and the solutions in the report to bring it to action. And also sometimes it's kind of frustrating when you see like, well, the same things were written 10 years ago, but not so much has happened. Uh, but now we're here, we launched this report and how, what do you see and what do you envision also it's important to make sure that the, the solutions in the report actually lead to tangible change? Well, I think we have to, as also as Stana said, there are a lot of actors I need to get together and make good regulations, good policies. And are you facilitating that as well? Uh, and who, who does that? That would be Heidi. That would be <laughs> Heidi. Okay, I'm just, just to <laughs> check you're because some are like, program. somebody <laughs> should do this. Like, who's <laughs> 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 so yeah, so it, it, we need also to have policies that are adapted to the new methods that we can use. And of course we need to do all this in a safe way. 
course, we cannot help. We cannot I mean, harm people, harm the environment. Mm. But we cannot also not wait until everything is absolutely perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, so we need to do it, but we need to collaborate more. And, and yeah, what's how, how are you working with like bringing the stakeholders together and how will you make sure that this report actually... So the UN Environment Programme convenes different actors and we're working through, uh, for example, global partnerships, including the Global Wastewater Initiative and the Global Partnership on Nutrient Management in this context. Mm -hmm. And we're also promoting the increased collaboration between actors in these different uh, types of spaces so that the, the solution space can grow with broader regional representation and with more inclusivity of other sectors, non-traditional as well. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Daniel. Could I make a comment? I mean, yes, uh, you, you, you mentioned something very interesting. I mean, 10 years ago, there was a report, and uh, here we are with another report yeah. uh, amongst hundreds of others that are out there uh, talking about these issues. Um, you know, it said there is nothing new under the sun, uh, mm -hmm. but we keep uh, having to revisit old things, and sometimes it's necessary to put um, old wine in new wine skin, if not for anything else, just to reinforce the message, because some of these are sort of principles that are really long lasting. Uh, if you look back to ancient China, there was a proverb that said, you know, you can't give away, you can give away a bag of rice, but you cannot give away a bowl of compost. And uh, I never heard that one. Exactly. This is from you know, you over sure it's thousands of years ago. Okay. Because <laughs> before the current paradigm of you know sewer centralized uh, sanitation systems that we have in, in, in all you know major cities around the world, mm. uh, people knew the value uh, in terms of nutrients that are available in excreta, and so they had sanitation systems that of course separated excreta from people, but closely returned it uh, to agricultural uh, practices as a source of nutrients, as a source of fertilizer. So actually what we are doing right now is that we need to look to the past to learn from what was done then, to learn from ancient wisdom, uh, as it were, and see how we can apply those principles in our current uh, generation. And uh, an important thing also is um, essentially how do we communicate uh, yeah. about uh, wastewater issues? Because I think... Um, we need to find new ways of telling compelling and engaging stories uh, about wastewater to drive behavior change, to drive engagement with different uh, kinds of people, with different types of stakeholders, to build these collaborations that are necessary to take action going forward. So I think yes. approaches or new innovative approaches in how we communicate is a key uh, way to leverage and, 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 and turn things uh, to get forward. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to hear because I see that you have some some things with you. So I'm looking forward to ask the question where you're going to oh. bring them up. But before that, just like a yeah. cliffhanger, because the, I think the, the viewers can see what you have with you. Yes. But uh, Christina, your <coughs> comments on what Daniel just said, or like adding more to it. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, definitely. I do agree because we have most of the solutions and we just need to accept to use them. And another thing is calling wastewater waste. It's not. It's just use water and yeah. needs to be directed in the place where it's useful now, in the state it is, or cleaned to a state where we can use it. So, there so is maybe changing the changing the name would the just name from wastewater to used water, used water or enriched water, recycled up. No, no, it's not upcycled yet, but yes. it can be. And then also understand that you, as a person, <coughs> in your everyday life, can actually add positively to this change by making sure that you don't use so much, you don't pollute so much, mm. and reuse as much as you can. Yeah, but that's an important thing also to not create, to we are be aware of like how much water do we do we actually use, both as first but also society yeah. uh, overall. Okay, we're l also like, do, do you have any comments, Hedion? I think the communication aspect and... Um, highlighting the opportunities, it's, it remains central in this topic. So what are the benefits, economic benefits, social benefits? What are other What are they? Can you mention some? Economic benefits, just the reuse of, of wastewater can add uh, great value to both agricultural practices if you have a safe reuse of wastewater approaches. Uh, in areas with lack of uh, water, where water is a, a problem, mm -hmm. then wastewater is really essential for you to be able to uh, proceed with daily life in many ways. Mm. And in terms of economic benefits, I think the de development of innovation, the innovation space is quite considerable here also mm. in terms of 
building on previous knowledge, perhaps not, well, 1,000 years ago, excellent. Mm -hmm. So we have quite a lot to draw on, and how can we scale and replicate these type of solutions across the world? So from Let private sector perspective, mm. this is a, a great area, space of innovation, I think. Both innovation and from my perspective, also like a good mm. business. I mean, we will always have w use water. <laughs> always use water. <laughs> uh, and what do you see about that? Like the like working also, if we're going to work cross-sector, what are all the business opportunities? Also opportunities for social entrepreneurs to drive solutions in these fields and also because there is so much to do. Daniel, do you have comments uh, on that? Yes, um, I think there's, there's many innovations that are coming up right now. Um, some of them actually connecting to <laughs> ancient wisdom, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Because an interesting thing is, um, I have two friends here that I like moving about with uh, from time to time. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Poo, Poo, and uh, Mr. Pipi. <laughs> um, and there is a reason why um, everyone can recognize this, you know. Um, uh, Mr. Poo is much smaller than Mr. P because on average, a uh, human being generates about, you know, half a kilogram uh, of feces <coughs> and about one liter of urine a day. Uh, of course, it can go up and down depending on various factors. But most of the nutrients are actually located in the urine. Well, I'm learning so much. <laughs> Not the feces, which just contains most of the organic matter and, of course, energy that can be recovered through various, you know, chemical and physical processes. Mm. So one of the key ways, um, one area that a lot of innovation is pushing towards is that can we find ways to separate these waste streams instead of putting them together and then spending a lot of money and energy and other resources to try to separate them in decontamination processes at wastewater treatment plants, or as they are called now in the United States, you know, water resource recovery facilities. So that's an area where lots of innovations that are happening. And I have two that I will just highlight quickly. Uh, one yes. is, uh, you know, this is a concentrated urine solution that is made from nitrification processes. For real uh, or is just a... This is not a pilot. This is a full-scale commercial solution that is available right now uh, by colleagues uh, from a company called Vuna uh, in, in Switzerland right now. And this has actually been certified uh, by the government of Switzerland. So this actually is available on the market. Wow. You can buy um, uh, this product. It's called Orin, uh, a concentrated solution uh, of urine. Uh, that okay. you can get, dilute with water, put on your tomatoes, put on your, you know, different crops or flowers around the house or whatever other practices that you have uh, uh, to grow food. And this is uh, a to powder... To grow food. Yes, yes, to grow food, exactly. Okay. So that's taking nutrients okay. back to and soil. And now in this, and then because time is running up, so you just okay. introduce it shortly. Yes, so this <laughs> is a, a powdered uh, 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 a substance, and this is also taking the, the, the nutrients available in urine and then uh, using a drying process uh, to, to dry them into a powder form that can also be used as fertilizer. <laughs> of course, certain agriculture practices will need liquid uh, substances to provide the nutrients. Others context, it's easier to work with the powder form. So these are some of the innovations that are happening uh, in this area to take us forward uh, so that we can receive wow. the nutrients. Wow, uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's like he needs applause after this presentation. <laughs> it's so complete. And thank you so much. It made also, uh, <laughs> yeah, both the possibilities and also the knowledge that it's needed to actually to drive this change forward so so concrete very <laughs> and I, I like i was saying i learned a lot and also again a lot, it's always good to exemplify concrete innovations mm -hmm. time is running up so i just want to give the the final word to you Heidi and uh, also like where do we find a report and what what how will how can more engage and be part of the solutions. Yes, definitely. The report is available from the UNEP website, and so it's available there, and it can be also be shared in this. This is being recorded. The link will also be in the under the YouTube uh, recording of this, if you wish to find it. There are also a number of resources that can be used if you wish to spread the word. Uh, please follow the UNEP uh, social media accounts or have a look today as the promotion of the report is going out there as well. And of course, engage in the Global Wastewater Initiative. My colleague Alex is here as well and is happy to um, explain what more. What is the name of your report, sorry? Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, wastewater turning problem to solution. Mm. Wastewater turning problems to solution. <laughs> yes. And it was also the name of this session that is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank all of you for highlighting how we can, how use water can is 
and can be used more as a resource since it is a resource that we're not always using. Uh, so thank all of you and thank all of you joining us uh, online for participating in this launch. Thank you. Thank you.